sneak. It was never me, but you. Misunderstood. Get up, had to beat those eyes. Got up and I beat those eyes. Misunderstood. It was always me versus me. It was never me versus you. And now I'm good. Wake up and I do my part. Wake up and I do my job. Just how I should. It was always me versus me. It was never me versus you. Misunderstood. Get up, had to beat those eyes. Got up and I beat those eyes. Misunderstood. It was always me versus me. It was never me versus you. And now I'm good. Wake up and I do my part. Wake up and I do my job. Just how I should. I feel it all. I feel it all. I'm feeling numb. I'm feeling numb. I lost my soul. So, so. It's on the run. run. I need a spark. I need a spark. I need some fun. I need that fun. I'm in the dark. dark. Mm. Like what's to come? It was always me versus me. It was never me versus you. Misunderstood. Get up, had to beat those eyes. Got up and I beat those eyes. Misunderstood. It was always me versus me. It was never me versus you. And now I'm good. Wake up and I do my part. Wake up and I do my job. Just how I should. It was always me versus me. It was never me versus you. Misunderstood. Get up, had to beat those eyes. Got up and I beat those eyes. Misunderstood. It was always me versus me. It was never me versus you. And now I'm good. Wake up and I do my part. Wake up and I do my job. Just how I should. It's me versus me. It's me versus me. It's you and I. The time is now. It's do or die. I chose my path. No choosing sides. I'll tell you what comes. Hit for the ride. That guy. No more time for the bad guy. Never going back to the bad side. Need the holy water get baptized. Yeah, yeah, I'm that guy. No more time for the bad guy. Never going back to the bad side. Need the holy water get baptized. I'm that guy. It was always me versus me. It was never me versus you. Misunderstood. Get up, had to beat those eyes. Got up and I beat those eyes. Misunderstood. It was always me versus me. It was never me versus you. What's up, CFO gang? It's your boy Jay Tuck. Real Cowboys fans stand up and yo, it's Saturday. I know y'all thinking like, what? Tuck normally doesn't go live on Saturdays, man. But I've been sitting back, was playing a little Red Dead Redemption. My son had a soccer game. He got canceled. So I was like, let me just chime in with Cowboys Nation and talk to the fam for a little bit on a Saturday. I'm about to gear up. Um, cool story. You know, I met um, a few of my subscribers. Actually, a good subscriber actually lives in my same neighborhood who watches the channel. He's CFO gang. He saw me out walking my dog. We talked for a minute. So we're about to go to the bar and watch some basketball and just kick back and relax on a Saturday. So hopefully everyone's having a great Saturday, kicking back, relaxing. I see everybody in the chat. I see Dustin. I see Steve. I see Sadiqa. What's going on? My guy, Joseph, what's going on? Everybody's in the building. Elijah, what's going on with y'all, man? So y'all know the drill, man. Share the content, get the word out. That Jay Tuck is going live on a Saturday. But I got a few things to talk about. Um, you know, first and foremost, I guess, you know, I guess we'll address the elephant in the room, right? So, you know, I really don't want to talk about this stuff. I've been making numerous videos, like how I was kind of done with it. But, you know, sometimes it just is what it is. And salute to everybody and my brother BJ Nix. We did a space last night. We did a space, y'all, on Twitter. This is why you have to follow us on Twitter. We did a space last night from 8 p.m. I, I kid you not. I kid you not. I'm not lying. From line up line. From 8 p.m. to 1.30 a.m. That's how long me and my brother BJ Nix was in this space. Salute to my guy, Eddie O, Outlaw. There was a bunch of people, Dia Wall, Aisha Morrison. Everybody was jumping in and out, right? So, we were just talking Cowboys football, talking a lot of things last night. So that's why you got to tune in because I'm not just on YouTube, but I'm also not just on Twitter, man. I'm everywhere. Sometimes I go on Instagram live, TikTok. I'm trying. I'm trying with TikTok. I'm trying with TikTok. But, you know, sometimes we're just everywhere. So if you want to get your around the clock Cowboys content, follow us, hit that subscribe button because you never know when some content might just jump off. But for those of you who saw my short yesterday or my Twitter post or my Instagram post, wherever you may have saw it, right, in regards to 105.3 The Fan, right? So here's what I'll say again for the thousandth time, for the thousandth time. Now, I'm probably not going to say this again because I'm getting tired of saying it. I have no problems with anybody at 105.3 The Fan. Every time I'm in Dallas, I turn on the station as soon as I get off the plane, but I'm headed to the game. I listen to 105 through the fan because I've known some good people over there. Jeff Cavanaugh is a good friend of mine. He was over there. Brian Broaddus is still over there, right? So I really have no animosity or hatred towards 
105 to defend. I don't know these people. Like, I think that's where a lot of people get confused. It's like, Tuck does Cowboys content or covers the Cowboys. He knows everybody. He's like, I'm familiar with people, but I don't know these people. You know, uh, Sadiqa, you saw it because you shared the video, right? So it was the same video I posted on Twitter. Um, so, so yesterday, what happened? Um, me, I was, I was doing some other stuff. If you follow me online, we were talking about J. Cole and Kendrick Lamar. Like, we, I wasn't even focused on the Cowboys or anything like that, right? Um, and so my guy Steven tagged me in a post and was like, "Yo, Tuck, what's your thoughts on this?" And it was about the whole situation that. The patience with Micah Parsons and the Cowboys is wearing thin. And I just said, listen, y'all. I just said, listen, y'all. It's Friday. I'm tired. I was cutting up film for you guys to drop a film session. I just said, I'm not dealing with that shit today. You know what I'm saying? I just said, I'm just not dealing with it today. I'm not dealing with it. And that's all I said, right? So then, all of a sudden, I looked through the post. I was like, wait a minute. I'm blocked by 105 through the fan. I was like, well, that's odd because, you know, I, I didn't even say nothing derogatory towards 105 through the fan. Okay, cool, whatever. And I'm just like, you know what? F it. Don't care. You know, like, it's not like it's going to be the end all be all of Jay Tuck if the radio station in Dallas blocks me when I live in Kansas City and work on the radio station in Kansas City. Like, it doesn't, you know. So I was like, okay, cool, whatever. Went on about my day, was playing a little Red Dead Redemption for those of you who plays video games, Red Dead Redemption Remake is amazing. I'm about to go feed my horses here in a minute. And then my phone starts blowing up, right? My phone starts blowing up and they're like, yo, Tuck, I think they're talking about you on the fan. And I'm just like, what now? Like, what, 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 what did I do now? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not even doing anything. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just chilling, right? So then I saw the video clip and then it was like, you know, about, if I see this person, he's always talking on Twitter, big and bold. And if I see him in person, I'm going to give him my peace of my mind. And, you know, but he can't get into places that we can get in because he's credentialed. And, and they're like, oh, a credential flex. And so maybe it wasn't about me. But it felt very Jay Tuckish because he just blocked me. And all of a sudden, there's a video talking about Twitter. And, you know, so there's different things, right? So I just assumed. Now, it could have been somebody else. Maybe it was Boss Cowboy. Maybe it was Law Nation. Maybe it was Mark Holmes. Maybe it was somebody else. But listen, y'all. Ever since I was little J. Tuck, right? Seven years old playing basketball, right? If you talk about my teammates, <laughs> you're talking about me. You know what I'm saying? So I was always standing on the forefront for my teammates. And I still do that. Like, take the Cowboy situation out of it, right? Even in corporate America at my past jobs, when I see like people bullying some of my teammates and I had a, you know, a, 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 you know, a co-worker who her whole commission check got screwed with, I stood up in the media and said, that's bullshit. To the managers, to the CEO, I was like, no, nah, y'all disrespecting my girl. She's been working her ass off. Y'all just cut her check. It's holiday season. That's bullshit. I don't rock with y'all. And everybody's just sat there and like, I can't believe I'm just like, like, I'll get a new job tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I've always been that type of person. So even if it wasn't about me, let's say it's about law nation, everything still applies. Like to feel like, yes, I've been blessed to have numerous credentials, numerous accesses to tons of different events. And it's going to continue whether you like it or not. I don't look down on those who haven't been given their opportunity because that's the only thing that separates them from the next person, right? I, and I'll toss out BJ Nix. The only thing that separates them from BJ Nix is that BJ just hasn't been given that opportunity. It's not about talent. It's not about skill set. If I was to put Skywalker or Vach or Law or a Big Game or or whoever or Rome or DMV on the run on five through the fan, we all know that they would kill it. I think we can all agree. So it's not about skill set. It's just like they just haven't been given the opportunity. I just been blessed here in Kansas City. I just been given the opportunity and I'm taking the ball and running with it. So we're not going to sit back and act like there's this huge talent gap between what they do on the radio station versus what we do as content creators, as bloggers, as writers or whoever. Right. So when they dropped the video, my response was strictly just for clarification. You know what I'm saying? Like if you're talking about me. Just say my name. Say, what, what, what does Beyonce say? Say my name. Say my name. Just say my name. You know what I'm saying? Just say my name. Like, I'm old school. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm all, I, I don't have the time for sneak dissing and innuendos and all. If I'm coming for him, suit to my guy, Cold, Cold Cowboy, in the building. If I have a problem with Cold Cowboy, I'm going to say I have a problem with Cold Cowboy because I don't want people to interpret my words wrong and think I could be talking about Sadiqa when I'm talking about Cole. You know what I'm saying? So just say the name, but I understand why they won't go on the station and say my name. Let's keep it a buck, y'all, because if you go on 105 through the fan or whatever station and you say this J Tuck guy is an idiot, he's a clown, you know, he's horrible, he sucks at what he does, right? There's going to be people out there who are listening are going to be like, well, who the hell is this J Tuck guy that they're talking about on 105.3 The Fan? So what do y'all think is going to happen? I posted on Twitter now. I used to have this back and forth with J Tuck, Justin Tuck, who played for the New York Giants, right? Back in the day, every time I would try to Google my name, he would pop up number one. That is no longer the case. That is no longer the case. I'm number one right now. I got the number one spot. Word to ludicrous, right? So if you search in J Tuck, the first person is going to pop up. It's going to be me. And what might happen to some of those Cowboys fans, they might start digging. They might start digging and searching. And like, well, damn, this guy is going deep with covering the draft. Well, damn, he has a YouTube channel. And this YouTube channel is kind of cool. It's kind of funny. He has a cool little community. You know? Well, damn, I, I'm, I'm looking at him on Twitter. He has almost, almost 40,000 followers. And he's with Des Bryan. And, you know, all these celebrities and rappers and entertainers are talking to him. And athletes are talking to him on a daily basis. I kind of like this guy. I'm going to give him a fault. So they don't want to do that. So that's why it's kind of these roundabouts, you know, a guy on Twitter and, and, and Twitter mafia and Twitter and all this. So like I said, man, I have no problem with anybody in the space. Like, I don't have no real beef. Like, what does Biggie say? What's beef? It's when you need two guns to go to sleep. I, I sleep peacefully. You know what I'm saying? But here's what people have to understand. In our community, and y'all do it to me. If you say something crazy and you don't provide any evidence, you will get fact checked. It's just the nature of the business. So if you go on the radio station and you say, well, I talked to a lot of people in house. I mean, like four. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. Four doesn't seem like a lot. You know what I'm saying? I talked to like a lot of people. I mean, a lot, a lot of people. I mean, I've, I've talked to four people and they told me that the Cowboys would be, you know, excited to get rid of Micah Parsons. Now, I can't confirm and say that's true or not, but based off of what I heard, you know, just kind of my guesstimate, kind of my hot, it's, you're just throwing stuff out there for content. So me, and numerous others, such as yourself and other content creators, we have the right to sit back and say, nah, don't agree. You have no facts, no factual evidence. There's no proof. You name no names. And you don't even have the connections that you're saying that you have. Right? You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's so that's where we're at. Right? You're going to get fact checked. I'm going to get fact checked. Law Nation's going to get fact checked. Jesse Hall is going to get fact checked. You know saying Brian Bronson get fact checked, but what happens and what's happening right now, Cowboys Nation, we're all parents. You know what I'm saying? It used to be this thing where it's, you know, I'm the parent, and because I said so, right? Because you are on the radio and you're on 105 through the fan, and you said so, it's the truth. But now with the internet and we got microphones, short microphones, the $800 microphone, I can sit back and be like, nah, not buying it. No, I'm not buying it. Nope, 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 nope. And that's it. We've all have that right. We all have our brands. We all have our platforms to be able to push back. We don't have to sit back and just take it without any factual evidence. When it comes to talking about the cap in Dallas, there's so many people that act like you, the viewer, don't understand how a salary cap works. You can sit back and say, nope. I know how voided years work, bro. You know what I'm saying? I can sit back. I know how voided years work. I know that you can move the money along. I know the cap, it's real, but it's also a myth. You can make it to be whatever you want to. You can maneuver money around if you choose to. The days of us being blind, misled, Cowboys fans just taking your word for it because you're on the radio or you write for the newspaper is over. And that is what the whole new media movement is about. 
We have our own platforms. We have our own education. We can now see things for ourselves and form our own decisions. And when we form our own decisions and push back, if you can't have that type of conversation back, it's not our fault. You know what I'm saying? If you saw my other video, y'all, I told them I would put a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars of my own money on the line if RJ or Shan wanted to come on this show, or we could have did neutral, we could have went on Boss Cowboy or, or wherever they wanted to go because they're not going to let me on the radio. And we can sit down and talk Cowboys football and let the viewers and listeners decide who can really cook when it comes to covering the Dallas Cowboys because they're credentialed, right? So they should be able to, you know, I put a thousand dollars up. I got zero responses because they know better. They know better, right? And it's because people don't understand, and I'm, I'm gonna transition here in a second. As content creators, we are specialists. We specialize in every minor detail when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys. I, you gotta be transparent. I'm on the radio here in Kansas City, right? I talk about the Chiefs. I know a lot of things about the Chiefs, the basis about the Chiefs, right? The functionality of the Chiefs. But I guarantee you there is a Chiefs content creator who's sitting on at home in his basement on StreamYard that will smoke my boots because I don't watch the Chiefs like I watch the Cowboys. I can't tell you what type of scheme they ran versus the Dolphins and we like I wasn't I wasn't that locked in. But with my team. I know every nook and cranny. I know the scheme. I know the philosophy. I know the language. I know the personnel. I know the cap. I know the verbiage. I know the acquisitions. I know every little detail. We are specialists when it comes to Dallas Cowboys. So I think the easier that people understand that, start giving content creators respect that we deserve, it's going to be a whole lot more peaceful. But every time you say my name or say one of my colleagues' name, I'm going to be right there and I'm not going anywhere and we're not backing down for nobody. So I just want to get that out before we get to the fun stuff. It's like, that's for me, man. I just want to talk football. That's what I'm here for y'all. That is what I'm good at. That's what you guys embrace me for and giving my platform is to talk Dallas Cowboys football. I'm not here for the TMZ, you know, girly chatty patty. Micah did this and Micah did that stuff. You know, it's just, it's just not my vibe. I, I get stuff from in-house all the time. And I'm like, I'm not saying that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm not putting that out there. You know, there's a lot of people that reached out to me about the whole Mozzie Smith situation. I wouldn't put that out there because I can't confirm. I ain't seen Mozzie. So I ain't going to go out there on my platform and be like, well, Mozzie, 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 Mozzie. You have to protect your platform. And when you have to come from the mud, like us content creators have, where we had to build every viewer, every viewer, we had to build trust. You guys are here right now on a Saturday at 3.30 because you I built that trust. You guys trust me when it comes to the content. You never take that for granted, and I never will. But some people, they platform pimp because everything's been spoon-fed for them. That's just not me. All right, y'all. So let's go ahead and get into what we came for. What I want to do today is talk a little draft content. So we're gearing up, right? It's, you know, it's funny how, you know, we're, we're weeks away from the NFL draft. And if you watch some of my draft content, kind of even going back to last year, when the Dallas Cowboys have 30 visits, the Dallas Cowboys have 30 visits, that's when we pull out our markers, y'all, and we start highlighting and circling because more than likely, a player who was a 30 visit is going to be a pick or they're going to try to aim for that player. And y'all know my, my method of madness. If there's a formal interview at the Combine, and they also invite them over for 30 visits, you can pretty much say, all right, it's official, right? They, they really got eyes on them. You know what I'm saying? They really got eyes on them. And that was when I uh, did the whole thing last year, this time last year with Overshown, when I told everybody, listen, Overshown, circle him. He is pretty much penciled in to be a Dallas Cowboy if he's available. And that's where it is. So salute to my guy, Martin Talks Cowboys, man. Follow him on Twitter, man. He does an amazing job. So here is a list of some of the Dallas Cowboys 30 visits. And as of right now, I think we're like three or four spaces available, right? So 26, I think, um, 26. But what I want to do today, we're going to chop this thing down slowly, right? So I'm going to focus on the running backs and offensive line. So if you look at the offensive line, let's start, oh, actually, the running back names listed, right? Um, 
And he broke this down kind of by rounds, just based off of the rankings on CBS Sports. As you see, there's no first round running backs listed. Um, in the second round, you have Jonathan Brooks, who we'll talk about. You also have Braylon Allen, Trey Benson, uh, Bucky Irving. You have uh, Josh M Chase McKellen. And you also have um, Rasheen Ali out of Marshall. So when it comes to some of these prospects, man, there is a lot of interesting and exciting names, honestly. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to keep it up, up, man. There's a lot of interesting names that is on this prospect list. And I think from the standpoint of like, yo, can we go out and get some of these players? Now, y'all know me, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all y'all know me. Y'all know I'm a Florida State fan. It just is what it is. If we're able to go out there and get a Trey Benson, man, that would be special, man. It would really be special to go get a Trey Benson. Man, I believe that Trey Benson is one of the best in this year's class. But, you know what I'm saying, will we be able to get him? I do not know, but I would love to be able to go get Trey Benson. But I feel like when it comes to this running back room, y'all, you know, there is going to be a lot of conversations. So I'll ask y'all in the chat, how early would you draft a running back? So let me know in the chat, man. Would y'all draft a running back in the first round, second round? Is that too high? Is Tuck tripping? Or do you feel like this is a need and we really need to go out there and get what we actually need, which I think we do need a running back. It's no slight to Deuce. It's no slight to Rico, right? But at the end of the day, I just feel like there's a void. You know there's a huge void at running back, and there's some quality. And when it comes to this year's draft class, when it comes to the running backs, I want to say it's not as sexy as it was last year, right? It's not a, not as sexy as it was last year because you had, you know, you had the the Gibbs. You also had the, um, you know, the, the B. John Robinsons, right? So you don't have that name. I feel like Jonathan Brooks would have been that name, but due to the injury, it's kind of, eh, you know, so it's, it's kind of, eh, you know, when it comes to Jonathan Brooks, but you know, I think a name that jumped out for a lot of people that a lot of people don't understand and really realize is Rashid Ali out of Marshall. And when you watch Rashid, I'm going to drop a full film session down on him. So that way, you know, you guys will be familiar. But what I really want you guys to do is my job. This is just my job. Can't speak for anybody else. When we get to the draft and we're doing our live draft show and you hear some of these names getting called out. I don't want you guys to have the who face. You know, I don't want you to have the who, who, who is that? I want you guys to be like, okay, that's Rashid Ali. Okay, uh, Marshall. We watched him on the channel. We did the film breakdown on him. Okay, cool. I know who that is, right? So that is my job to get you guys geared up. So we're about to be all systems but go these next few weeks. We're just going to go pedal to the floor, right? But when you watch Rashid Ali, um, you just like, you just said it, Tyrone, like, He's not sexy, you know, but he's solid. You know what I'm saying? The, the, in this running back class, yeah, this whole rolling running back class. But Rashid Ali is not a sexy um, running back, right? It's nothing that's going to jump off the screen, but he does a lot of things well. At the senior bowl, he's 5'11", 206 pounds, has good initial burst, um, good speed as well. It's not home run, hit your head on the goalpost type speed, right? But it's enough, right? He had a thousand yards, like a thousand thirty-five rushing yards, fourteen touchdowns, and two hundred and seven yards receiving. Um, so he is a very balanced running back, right? He can do a lot of different things well, you know. So he's not going to be your flashy, you know, speedster guy, but he can run between the tackles. The thing that I love about him, he's also able to, to cut and go. Like he, when he makes a decision, he cuts quick. And he makes a decision. And he's able to bounce outside, run between the tackles. Now, here's the fun thing about this game, this film that I'm showing. There's another guy. It's linebacker. We'll do linebacker later. But Peyton Wilson on the other side, right? But Peyton Wilson pretty much just blew up this whole damn game. But we'll talk about him later. But Rasheen Ali, I think it would be a good pick. So, you know, I don't think that if you tell me we're going to go into the season that Rico Dowdle and Rasheen Ali are our primary two one-two punch, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's just, I mean, it doesn't, eh, you know, it doesn't excite me. I think we'll be okay, but it doesn't excite me. And I don't think it puts fear into any defensive coordinator. Right. But I feel like they're dynamic enough. They can do a little, you know, a little bit of both. 
and they kind of mirror each other. You know, the thing about Rasheen, if you can even kind of watch him, like he's he has some thick calves, man. He's kind of he's kind of built thick for 209, right? But he doesn't run punishing. He's not a punishing runner. But like I said, he runs hard. He plays hard. Pass pro is a little, mm, you know. But I feel like overall, man, he's a good prospect and a stinky good prospect. And he's a guy that's probably going to be a day three pick available. So if you hear his name call, I would say I wouldn't be I wouldn't be out on the pick. You know what I'm saying? It depends on what's on the board, right? Depends on what's on the board. But if we go out and handle our business on day one and day two, I think he's a really solid pick that can add some depth to this Dallas Cowboys running room. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't reach on him. I wouldn't reach on him. You know, I think that overall... He's still a good prospect. So I wouldn't mind getting Rasheen Ali out of Marshall. Um, the next guy, right? So it's just funny, right? We always talk about Alabama uh, running backs, right? And you have big Jace out there, man. And Jace is a guy that I'm not sure why he's not being talked. Oh, and go back to Rasheen Ali, right? One of the negative knocks on him. He had like five or six fumbles last year. So got to clean that up, right? Um, but going back to Jace, um, you know, Jace is a guy that, I thought just with the Alabama logo on his helmet, he would be talked about a lot more than he has been. But it's kind of like slid under the radar. But when you look at him, man, he's 5'10". So I know a lot of people, Cowboys fans particularly, they want height. But he's 221. He's 221, so he definitely has some size on him. Good runner, has a good long stride when his runs ability. Um, you know, he can run a lot of outside zone, which we kind of run a little zone scheme as well. Um, good burst, good initial burst when it comes to Jace as well. So overall, I think he is a good prospect. That's if you are a Cowboys fan and you want that size and you want that size, he kind of gives you that size running back. But He's not going to give you much to be desired in the in the in the in the in the passing game, right? You know, pass pro is okay, is decent, but he's not going to be a route runner. He's not going to be a guy that <clears throat> you can flex out wide and line up versus a safety or a wide receiver. He's not that. He's going to be your north south runner, but he has some availability. Now, another red flag of why they're not talking about him possibly is because he had a lower leg injury. I think his, correct me if I'm wrong, y'all, I think his ACL injury was in 2021, 2022, something like that. So he had ACL injury, and we all know ACLs, you know, that that kind of scares people when it comes to the running back position, you know, and, and, and rightfully so, right? And we'll talk about Jonathan Brooks here in a minute. But just having those lower leg injuries, running back who's going to take a lot of punishment, you kind of you're kind of hesitant, but overall I think he's a decent prospect. The injuries kind of concern me in the lack of like you know ability in the past game. He's not gonna he's not gonna really scare you a lot, but he's definitely a good downhill runner. Yeah, Tyron. Um, yeah, uh, Derek Henry is not running our route. Yeah, you know I'm saying so. So yeah, so I know a lot of people are wanting those Derek Henry type running backs, right? And I feel like that you have that size. Is he Derek Henry? Absolutely not, right? But he can definitely put his head down and, and go a little bit. And so if your Jace is sitting there in the sixth round, maybe the seventh round he's available, I would definitely go ahead and snag him. Now, the other guy, you know what I'm saying? The other guy, man, needs no introduction. Like I said, man, I love him. I would be ecstatic. As 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 bad as this Cowboys offseason has been, Cowboys Nation, if we were to turn around and get my guy Trey Benson, I'm like, Jerry, I'm kind of mad at you, but you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's okay. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm so mad at Jerry and Steven, but I'm a little bit happy. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, back in the day when your, your parents, you know, because back in my day, you can get whoopings. You know what I'm saying? Like, you just get a whooping. You're in your room. You're mad at your mama. But then she's like, you want McDonald's? You know what I'm saying? You want McDonald's? I'm like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's how I would feel if the Dallas Cowboys drafted Trey Benson, man. Trey Benson, y'all know, like I said, I watch this kid every Saturday. He's dynamic. He is by far, I think, the most balanced running back in this year's class and one of the safest picks. I think he's going to be a guy that we're sitting back on Sunday and saying, there he is, right? Pass pro, can run downhill has agility, can hit the outside. Not extreme sexy speed, right, but it's more than enough to gear up. Soft, reliable hands for swing passes out the backfield. Like, he's going to – and he's a hard worker, man. I mean, Coach Norvell loved Trey Benson, 
And I know a lot of people talk about our Florida State offense, right? Because we had Keon Coleman, you had Jaheim Bell, you also had Johnny Wilson. You know, so we had some talent, but our Knowles team, our offense went through number three. It went through Trey. So he is definitely one of those guys that if you need to carry the load, he can carry the load. And I think that Mike McCarthy would love him. I think I mean, just his attitude, he's very blue collar, lunch pail, running back, gonna come out not too flashy, come and come out there, do his job. Great locker room leader. He's everything you want in a running back. Now, where do we grab him? That's the magical question, right? That's that's the magical question. I don't know, right? Because with him, so you have you have Jonathan Brooks, you have Trey Benson. And you also have Jalen Wright, the running back out of Tennessee. Last year, running backs went early, right? Because you had Bijan. And then a lot of people remember we were remember we were talking about the idea of maybe us drafting Gibbs. Well, that got shot down because Gibbs went in the first round. So I'm not sure how it's going to pull with this year's class, right? Because I feel like if you're sitting back on draft day and you see, I don't know, let's toss out a name, the Buffalo Bills draft. Jalen Wright, you better go get your running back now because once that first one is pulled, it's going to be boom, 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 boom. And I feel like if you lose Trey, if you lose Jonathan, and if you lose uh, Jalen Wright, then that's when you can kind of sit back and say, all right, we're going to wait a little bit. We're going to wait a little bit, right? So I feel like you can sit back and wait a little bit, depend, just like Joseph said, depending on the, how, how the draft goes. But it's a crapshoot, right? Because you might wait too long and it might get pulled too early. But the core three, it's a crapshoot. I don't know where they're going to go. But if they go, a lot of different pieces are going to fall when it comes to this running back room. And you might have to reach a little bit if you have one of the big three. That's kind of circle. But speaking of big, man, Braylon Allen running back out of the University of Wisconsin. Did a film breakdown on him. So definitely check that out on the channel. Big running back. I mean, he just has the size. I think he's working out with Derrick Henry. I think he posted a picture today. He's working out with Derrick Henry. Now, here's how crazy. Braylon Allen's a big boy. Derrick Henry still makes him look small. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's a big boy. But but, but Derrick Henry still makes him look small, man. But the thing about Braylon Allen is there's a lot of cleanup when it comes to his running game. But I think the biggest attraction when it comes to Braylon Allen is his size and also, he's very young. He's only 20 years old. He can't he can't even go to the bar to have a drink. You know, so he can't even go to the bar to have a drink yet. Um, so Braylon Allen, and yeah, he does have the foaming problems as well. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, with Braylon Allen, if you're wanting your, just your big size guy, and I know a lot of Cowboys fans, that's what y'all are wanting. Y'all are wanting your size guy because you feel like we missed that void because y'all don't want to admit that, hey, you know, maybe moving on from Zeke and not having a punishing running back maybe cost us a little bit, right? But if you're looking for a big possible, and salute to my guy, Rome Cowboys fan talk, we got Derrick Henry at home. Braylon Allen can be your, we got Derrick Henry at home. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely like him. Good running back, has good upside, good physicality. The fumbles, he runs high a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like he's a good prospect. If you bring him in, eventually one to two years down the road he'll be a force i think in the nfl level because he's just still young like he hasn't even got his grown man body yet you know what i'm saying like he hasn't even got his grown man body yet and once he gets his grown man body it could be a wrap so that's Braylon allen so rasheed ali jace mckellen uh trey benson and Braylon allen are all 30 visits now if you want to do the fusion dance like i told y'all formals interviews at the combine and also 30 visits trey benson trey benson and also braylon allen you know what i'm saying trey benson and also braylon allen so you know you got those two two prospects as well but another prospect who we'll talk about here also is jonathan brooks out of the university of texas right great prospect and here's the thing the cowboys could necessarily could necessarily go with the situation where they're going to kind of sit back and red shirt it a little bit and just go with Rico, go with Deuce, you know, go with Hunter 
until Jonathan Brooks is fully a go, right? So you could do that because it's 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 an opportunity, right? Because like the talent is there when it comes to him. But the thing that just scares me, y'all, leg injury, knee injury, November. You know, it's 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 a reach, right? It's it's a reach. I'm not gonna say a reach, it's a risk. It's a risk when it comes to Jonathan Brooks, right? But it's a gamble. And we've known the Cowboys to kind of gamble and roll the dice, right? They had um they had Jalen Smith, they rolled the dice on him, Damone Clark with the neck injury, they rolled the dice on him. You know, so could they possibly roll the dice again with Jonathan Brooks and say, Hey, if we're able to get a fully healthy version of this. We can walk away with the best running back in the draft, but it's a huge gamble. I don't know, y'all. I I feel like, honestly, I feel like honestly, right? When you look at this Cowboys team, how things currently look, how things just currently look, right? I don't know if we are capable of taking gambles this year, right? I just feel like the way that our roster currently looks, I feel like we can't be gambling. You know what I'm saying? We can't be gambling with the rent money. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we, we just we just can't be gambling with the rent money right now. Like rent is due. You know what I'm saying? Our our rent's two thousand dollars. We got two thousand and ten dollars in our wallet in our bank account. We can't be placing no parlays right now, man. We can't be placing no parlays hoping to hit big. We need to go and handle business. And I just feel like if you're going to go running back, especially in the second round, and Trey Benson's there. You just got to go Trey. You know what I'm saying? You got to go Trey because I feel like he's going to give you the best impact, immediate impact. And the first three picks, since we don't have a fourth, and we'll talk about that as we go through the mock, right? First three picks, we got to hit, y'all. I know we've been in the second round slump. You know what I'm saying? We've been in the second round slump pretty much since Trayvon Diggs. We got to shake about it. You know what I'm saying? Will McClay, Will McClay, I need you to wake up in the second round. You know what I'm saying? I don't want no lunch breaks. I don't want no nothing. I need you focused in the second round because you've been shooting some bricks in the second round lately. We need you to hit in the second round. We need you to on day one, day two, and then also day three. We can kind of hang out a little bit. But the first three picks, I want instant impact, and I feel like there's going to be an opportunity, whether it's running back, whether it's offensive line, which we'll talk about here in a second. But we can't have any misses because our roster, y'all, is really depleted and we have to fill the void with guys that can impact this year. I know all the Cowboys fans here watching this channel, watching me across different platforms, we want to win now. We might have a few little stragglers, right? Who are like, I don't care. Right? I'm all about the future, right? Nah, I want to win now. So I need some guys that can come in and help this team win now. I don't want a guy that, hey, you know, Jonathan Brooks, when he gets healthy for 2025, I mean, he's going to be out. No, 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 no. We'll do all that later. I want guys as immediate impact, and I feel like Trey Benson would be a guy. Also, Jalen Wright would be guys that can definitely jump in. We need entrees. I feel like some of these prospects that they're bringing in for these 30 visits is kind of like side dishes. Now, there's some good side dishes. Like, Braylon Allen is not a side dish. He's more like mac and cheese, where it's like a side dish, but it could really be an entree depending on your mood. You know what I'm saying? But I would like to really get a guy at the running back that's definitely an entree, and I think Trey Benson is that guy, man. So let me know. Any other names that y'all are thinking about? I think I saw as well, man. Also watch the privates. Also watch the private visits as well um, and the private workouts. So there's some of those going on. Um, yeah, man, the UDFAs fill the void, Stephen Jones. You know what I'm saying? But here's the thing. Can you hit on UDFAs? Yeah, absolutely. Especially at the running back position. I mean, look at what the Ravens did with Keaton Mitchell. But once again, it's a gamble. It's a gamble. It's a dice roll. And depending on how you know your day can work, you can easily crap out and really put yourself in a hole. Now, I want to go over and transition real quickly before we get into the mock um, is the offensive line 30 visits, offensive line 30 visits, because this is another topic of discussion, right? I know a lot of Cowboys fans are talking about offensive line. Should we go tackle? Should we go guard? We should not go. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a lot of different conversation pieces. Um, salute to my bro, uh, Vach Lombardi. He had me on the show the other day. We went through this. So definitely check out that video, man, because we was cooking. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 like Vach is like Vach is like one of the, the founders of this Cowboys content draft stuff. You know what I'm saying? So he really laid down the blueprint 
Oh, uh, so before we pivot, good question. Bucky Irving, he was also a 30 visit, right? I like Bucky Irving. My problem with Bucky Irving, I just feel like we already have that with kind of deuce-ish, you know what I'm saying? So we already kind of have it. So I wouldn't want to go into a situation where you have Bucky Irving, Deuce Vaughn, like it, they kind of cancel each other out, you know what I'm saying? So that's my only knock on Bucky. Now, if you say, you know what, we're going to move on from Deuce or we're not even considering Deuce, okay, I would consider it. But Bucky Irving would probably be the last of my priority for the Cowboys, for the Cowboys' sake. I like him a lot as a prospect. But for the Cowboys' sake, I just feel like we need a little bit different than what Bucky can offer us. Um, yeah, so offensive line, man. Uh, Kamani Vidal, man. Kavadi Vidal um, out of Troy. Another good name. Good balanced prospect. He kind of reminds me. He kind of comes that Rasheen Ali kind of mold, right? Um, good runner. Put up great numbers in his college career. Very balanced running back. High IQ guy. I mean, there's a lot of guys, right, who weren't 30 events. We can talk about Isaiah Davis, who you all know I love. My guy, Blake Watson. Like, there's a lot of names. Cody Strader out of Missouri. Um, Dylan LeBeau. Like, there's a lot of names out of there that we can definitely talk about. But we can be here all damn day. We want to get to the mocks, right? Um, but I definitely like Kamani. I like, like, so there's a few prospects that I'm not a fan of. I'm not a fan of Audric. I'm from, from Notre Dame. Like, it just, I tried it. I tried it because I know a lot of people were asking about him. I watched it. Eh, slept on it, came back, still wasn't feeling it. And just like, eh, you know, maybe he'll prove me wrong, but it's just not, it just didn't, just didn't jump for me. Um, offensive line. So here's some guys that were some, some 30 visits, right? Now, I'm going to keep it a buck, right? You know, and fellas and also ladies watching, watching the show right now, Sometimes we go out on dates with people that's way out of our range. You know what I'm saying? With people that are way out of our range. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes it's kind of cool to go on a date with a baddie, but you know this ain't going to last. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like when it comes to like the first three that's listed on this list, I don't see them getting to 24. Like I would be shocked if we're sitting there on a live draft show and Graham Barton's on the board and Talese Fuaga's on the board and Troy Fatano's on the board. I would be shocked. I'd be like, oh my God. You know what I'm saying? I would be, I would honestly wouldn't know what to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, just don't mess it up, Will. Like, just just pick one and just get away with it. You know what I'm saying? So Graham Barton, phenomenal talent, athletic talent. Um, you know, I think there's been tons of film breakdowns. If you watch when we went through Jarrett verse, we did Jarrett verse versus Duke and him and Jarrett verse was out there battling. I watched Graham Barton uh, two years ago when he was here in Lawrence, when Duke played versus Kansas, phenomenal athlete, phenomenal athlete. Graham Barton is going to be one of those guys where we sit back and say, we knew it. You know what I'm saying? We, we just, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's just, it's just there. The question with Graham is what's his going to position, position going to be, right? He played left tackle. A lot at the University of Duke doesn't have the size to play left tackle at the NFL level. So is he going to be a guard? I believe he's going to be a left guard. Um, some people are saying center, though he has minimal experience about playing center. I think he had like, I don't know, like two or three games at the center position. Okay. Okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like he has the IQ and the athleticism to transition over to center as well. So I feel like you can get a guard slash center out of Graham Barton, but ideally for me, I think he's best suited at guard, either left or right. And we spoke about that on Vach's show, right? Because we talked about the differences and the nuances from playing guard versus playing center. Like you got to be able to move left and move right and snap and move forward. Like there's a lot of different nuances because you're also the quarterback of the offensive line that it's not just an easy, okay, well, you, you play guard, just go play center and you'll be good. Like, it's, it's a lot of different growth, a lot of different thinking that goes into that position. I think Graham can grow into it, but there's going to be a learning curve at that position. So, you know, I like Graham. He's probably one of my top offensive linemen. Um, not my top. I mean, my top is Joe Alt. I mean, I feel like Joe Alt's like, I'm not going to do a 50 board this year because, I mean, y'all seen him enough. But I got Joe Alt as my number one overall prospect, period, in the draft. Like, overall, everybody. That's Caleb Williams. That's over neighbors. That's over there. Like, Joe Alt's my number one. You know what I'm saying? But we're not getting them. So that's why I ain't doing no Joe Alt film or anything like that. Um, but, yeah, Graham Barton would be amazing. I mean, you have Graham Barton. If he plug Graham Barton at left guard and kick Tyler Smith out to left tackle, that's a good left side. You know what I'm saying? That's a real good left side if you're able to do that. Talese Fuaga out of Oregon. 
very athletic, very athletic uh, guy. He's beast. He's a feist. He's feisty, tough, hard nose. Like I love a lot of different things about him. I know some people were asking me, could we plug him in guard? Yeah, you could possibly plug him in because he plays nasty enough in the run game that you could possibly plug him in guard. So, you know, right tackle probably at the NFL level, maybe a guard if worst case scenario. And a lot of people think like going from tackle to guard is a demotion. It's just about showing your versatility and where you can really fit. I mean, Tyron Smith did it. Lyle Collins moved around and we saw Terrence move around. Like there's a lot of people who move around at the NFL level. So I think Talese is definitely a phenomenal prospect. I just don't think he's going to be there at 24, but 30 visit and also a formal, you know, so maybe it is something there, but I highly doubt he's going to be there. Troy Fatano. Troy Fatano was the very first prospect I broke down this draft year. Film sessions out there available. Definitely go check it out if you haven't. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Tough, nasty left tackle at the University of Washington. Salute to my girl, Camber. I know she loves him. Um, has a nasty streak about him. Very athletic. He's a mover. He can do a lot of different things well. I just don't think he's going to be there. You know what I'm saying? I just don't think he's going to be there. You know what I'm saying? I just don't think he's going to be there, right? Um, so I would love to get Troy Fatano, but I don't. He's gone, y'all. He's gone. I feel like these three right here are gone. So we'll be looking at possibly. Here's the names, right? And we'll talk about Matt can call this uh, here in a minute out of pit, right? Um, you're probably going to be in a situation, just ideally where you're going to have J.C. Latham. Maybe Mims is available. Tyler Guyton. And then my favorite, who, I, from what I'm hearing, here, here's me using my big in-house. So, so for what I've been hearing in-house, that the Cowboys really aren't a fan of Jordan Morgan. I don't care. I am. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care. I am. You know what I'm saying? But that's what I've been kind of hearing from some people. I've been talking to some other scouts and stuff like that. But I love Jordan Morgan. Um, so, that, that would kind of be there. Um, but then also, Matt can call this out of pit. Now, he is a natural mover. Doesn't have good athleticism. But he gives you the flexibility. He gives you the flexibility to play right tackle or left tackle. So, he kind of gives you that momentum. He's uh, 6'6", like 327, so he has the size. But when you watch him on film, and if y'all want the film, we'll break it down. But for me personally, I think breaking down offensive line film can get boring. I'll let that be to my guy, Vach. Um, But he's very, well, let's go with, you know what I'm saying? Like, he has the size. You know, he, he meets all of the, the measurements, but nothing really jumps. And I feel like at the NFL level, where he's really going to need to work with is dealing with speed rushers. And we know there's a speed rusher born every day at the NFL level. So is he going to be athletic enough to really block those guys, especially in the past game? I'm unsure. I think he's going to be more of a prospect guy. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, eh, I'm kind of cool on him. But I know the Cowboys, they brought him in for a 30 visit. So maybe there is something there. Now, here is a name. And my guy Dom had mentioned this on Twitter today. I've been kind of pushing for it as well. A name where this is going to fill Cowboys Nation, Tyler Smith 2.0-ish, all right? So walk with me, walk with me. What might be the situation is where the Cowboys have a guy that they really like and they're not sure if he's going to be there at 56 so they're going to reach back and just grab the guy. And a lot of Cowboys fans are going to be on these live shows and then chats and everything saying, Tuck, what the f did we just do? But y'all are not going to do that because y'all are going to be aware. I mean, I have his film session coming up soon here too as well on the channel. And I'm going to butcher his last name, but it's Kingsley Sumadia out of the University of BYU. He has size. He's 6'5", 327. He has the versatility. He can play right tackle and left tackle as well. Pure athletic freak. I mean, he can move. Like, he can move on film. Like, he, he moves like a damn tight end damn near. You know what I'm saying? So, he can definitely move. He's super explosive. He can throw his body weight around. And he's only 21 years old, right? And so, he's kind of a guy that I think Cowboys Nation 
you should really, really just put on your radar. We're gonna, like I said, we're gonna break down the film on him. You should really put this kid on your radar out of BYU because this could be a Tyler Smith situation where it's like they like him, he's their guy, but he's not getting the 56. So the Cowboys say, you know what, F it. We're gonna get him at 24. Cowboys fans log off the chat. Who did we just take, Tuck? I can't believe this. We shouldn't even reach. We had Brian Thomas Jr. right there. We should have went. And I think this is the guy, right? So this is a guy I would definitely circle. Now, I, I, was he, uh, let me go back to the list. Let me go back to the list. Was he a uh, 30 visit? I think he is a 30 visit. Uh, yeah, he is on the 30 visit list. So he's a 30 visit, right? So right there at 40, right? Kind of based off of the CBS, okay? So he's a 30 visit. I mean, the Cowboys have some interest. He's right outside of the first round but he's possibly not getting to 56. Would you go get him? The Cowboys could. The Cowboys really could go out there and pull another Tyler Smith. Now, he has like a lot of ability, y'all, but there's some cleanup work, right? But sometimes, just like Tyler Smith did, like you get camp, you get rookie camp, you get OTAs, and you can get, you know, real, real camp, right? You start to grow. You start to grow, you know what I'm saying, a little bit. And yeah, Chris, and we'll talk about it when we get to the mock, right? That's why I'm team trade back. You know what I'm saying team trade back because then it makes sense. You can get some more extra picks and more incentives. Get a guy like that. So let's say we get him at 29 or 30, okay? Okay, big whoop. He, was, he would have been taking 10 picks later, right? But you also get some value in return. I would be okay with that. The most casual Cowboys fan probably wouldn't, but me personally, I would be okay with that. So like I said, y'all, this is definitely a guy, Kinsey, Kingsley, Samadia, out of BYU. Um, you know, he's definitely a guy you should definitely take a look at. You know, I watched him a few times because, you know, full transparency, uh, I think my daughter is going to go to BYU. So um, don't ask why. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, so I watched BYU play in the Big 12. So good kid, good upside, very young, um, has some upside potential, talented, the measurements all there. He's a work in progress. That could be a situation the Cowboys are sitting back and saying, Let's go get our guy. So it's going to be interesting to see how things play out. But like I said, he's definitely a guy I would circle on your list just to make sure that you're aware. So that way you're not freaking out on draft day when we go live. Um, Patrick Paul out of Houston. Patrick Paul is decent depending on what you're asking for, right? Are you wanting an instant starter? Mm. I mean, I personally are not a fan of Patrick Paul, to be honest with you, like that, you know, saying instant kind of starter. But, you know, I think there's some value there. I think there's some value there. But overall, man, I'm just not a huge fan of, of, of Patrick Paul, um, you know, just to be honest with you, just to be fully transparent with y'all. Um, I, mean, I would take him. I think there's some value you can probably get from him. But it's nothing that I think that is really going to help you out the gate. You know, saying it's not really going to help you out the gate. Um, so that's why I would kind of be cool on Patrick Paul, man. So we are about to load up, y'all. I know it's Saturday. I appreciate y'all for rocking with your boys. So we're going to go ahead and get into the mock draft real quick. Um, we're going to do a trade back. Let's do some trade backs. I know, you know what I'm saying? Y'all talking about trade backs and get some value. Um, so we're going to do that. We're going to do some trade backs. Uh, try to get some value. We're going to rock this mock draft real quick for y'all. And we're going to get up out of here for Saturday, man. So cool story. Like I said, um... I was out walking my dog in the neighborhood one day and a dude and it stopped me and was like, yo, can I ask you a question? I'm like, okay, they're about to sell me something. They're about to sell me something. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I, ain't, I ain't buying. You know what I'm saying? But he was like, yo, can I ask you a question? I was like, yeah. He's like, man, are you Jay Tuck? And he was like, I was like, yeah, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? Because I don't, I mean, they, they know me Jay Tuck from the radio, but I'm like, you know what I'm saying? So he's like, man, I'm CFO game, bro. Huge subscriber. I love your content, man. I follow you on Twitter, man. I'm a huge Dallas Cowboys fan stuck here in Kansas City. So we're talking for a minute. So we're about to go link up, man, and go have a few drinks and watch some college basketball, man. But that's what I love the most, man. It's like interacting with y'all. I don't do this really for me anymore. I do this for y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like I love interacting with y'all. I love the bond that we have. I love the education, I love the conversation pieces. Like you guys push me. And I feel like that's how I built this community where it's like, the knowledge is everywhere. Like you guys, literally, I could probably just shut the hell up and let Tyrone run the show from the chat. 
because I know he's trusted enough that I know he knows what he's talking about. Like, there's people in our community where I can sit back and just let, let y'all cook, and I can sit back and let y'all cook. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I love about our community because it's like, it's not just the Jay Tuck show. Actually, speaking of the Jay Tuck show, I'm starting a brand new YouTube channel next week called the Jay Tuck show. But that's completely, completely different. You know what I'm saying? But that's what I love about this community, man. And everybody's pushing everybody, everybody's learning. To ultimately, we're trying to do our best to help this Dallas Cowboys team win a championship. Um, also, salute to our new sponsors, Picket. So, for any of you who are sports betters or, you know, you do play like, um, you know, some of those other games like, uh, uh, you know, uh, Pick Kings or whatever it's called. I forgot what it's called. Like, not DraftKings. Um, the other one. You know what I'm saying? I can't do it here in Kansas City. Fan, uh, fantasy. Fantasy Dogs or whatever, right? Um, pick it. So it's a sports betting app and think of it as like Twitter for sports betting. So it's like, I'm on there now. They just brought me on there. So for people on Twitter, he's like, yo, Tuck, who are you taking tonight? Who are you taking tonight? I'll put my picks there. We can have conversations. I'll show all my picks. I'll show all my wins, my losses. Everything's fully transparent. It is fully free. It's fun as hell to do. And there's a lot of, there's like some real sports bears who really do it for real on there. And it's all free, man. And if you sign up and use the code CFO, They'll give you free money. Those cash app be like three dollars, or some of my people has gotten a hundred dollars. Man, prize picks, yeah, prize picks. The other one, I can't. So sports betting is legal in Kansas, but I can't do prize picks in Kansas for whatever reason. It's like it's, it's, it's the dumbest thing ever. Um, but yeah, so you can try it out, man. And I like it because it tracks everything. I can connect my FanDuel sports betting, my MGMs. I connect everything to there, and it'll show me like, yo, tuck you on fire right now, or bro, you tripping? Because we got this final four, and these spreads are horrible, man. But we're not talking about sports betting. But check out Picket Man's a free app. Use the code CFO. They'll give you free money. And y'all can holler at your boy to get my free picks, man. So um, get into the mock draft. We're going to do seven rounds because we not soft, and it's it's April. You know what I'm saying? We don't do no two or three-round drafts. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, hell nah, bro. We cook over here. Um, we're going to leave everything standard. I know some people are like, oh, crank it up. Do the PFF board and crank it up. Like, no, nah, we don't. I mean, we could do that, but I don't want to. Um, well, actually, let's do it because we always do it on public. Let's crank it up. Let's see what this does. I never did this before, so let's see what it does. But this is how you know, I told you guys when we're doing our draft wizard university stuff, right? Mock drafts is not official, y'all. This is really just a way of building calluses in muscle memory to understand how prospects work. You know what I'm saying? This is not going to be a reality, you know, but it's kind of cool to kind of see, okay, I'm in the seventh round and I know 15 different prospects. If you get to the seventh round of a mock draft and you still know 15, 10 players on the board, you are fully transparency. You're a lot further than a whole lot of people. You know what I'm saying? We're a lot further than a whole lot of people, man. So, so that's where we're at. We're going to go ahead and get into this mock draft. Do you guys want to trade back, man? I got 15 minutes. We got to make this quick because I got to meet my homeboy at the bar here in for a second. So, got 15 minutes. Let me know in the chat. Team trade back or nah? Y'all want to go straight raw and run through it. So let me know in the chat. Let's see. I personally like team trade back. You know what I'm saying? All right, Joe. So, yeah. That's the hot topic conversation. Salute to my brothers, DMV and Rome the other night, right? We went through that scenario where we traded back with the Bills. I see trade back, trade back. Yeah, y'all want to trade back. All right. So let's see if we can trade back with the Bills. But I also think, y'all, you know, kind of, just, you know, boom, you know, the Chiefs might need to trade up and get a wide receiver because this is a Rasheed Rice thing. It might be a little bit more difficult than people are thinking. So um, so the Chiefs would probably be one. Also, the Buffalo Bills. Um, so let's see. Bills, 28. Cowboys, 24. Let's try to get 128. And also 133 from them. And let's not be too greedy, right? So to my brother, Professor always like, man, go get more picks from the Bills. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't rob them. You can't rob them. But let's let's go ahead and and so do you guys let's 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 do it this way. We'll do the trade before versus waiting, Joe, and see how the board falls. Or do y'all want to have some fun and we'll see how the board falls then trade? It says no trade backs. This front office isn't competent enough to make such moves. They'll trade back. They'll trade back, but they won't trade forward. That's 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 the problem. All right, so we could probably get 
We'll get to 28. We'll get 128. And we'll also get 133 from Buffalo. From Kansas City, we get 32. Let's even get 95. And let's even get 131. So which trade do you guys like most, right? Getting the 125. I'm oh, sorry, the, the 95 and the 131 from Cheese going back to 32. Or the one from Buffalo. Hmm. I like this 95 right there, though. So you get two picks in the top 100 versus Buffalo. Let's go with the Chiefs, man. Let's go with the Chiefs. Let's go with the Chiefs. Let's get two picks in the top 100. Bang, bang. <laughs> now, now we being greedy. Now we, now we try. See, we we can't we can't rob the Chiefs like this because the Chiefs have a real competent GM, or maybe we could, right? Um. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Now the Chiefs wouldn't give up that much value. We keep it realistic. Thirty-two, ninety-five, one thirty-one. All right. Said trade back. You say they're not as smart to trade back. I mean. <laughs> They traded, they traded back with the Eagles before. So it's in them. You know, I just I don't I just don't know. I I I honestly don't know what the Cowboys front office is doing, y'all. So we're not doing things their way. We're gonna do things our way to get this damn team fixed. So all right, we're gonna make the trade with the Chiefs. Look to my guy Brett Veach. Appreciate you, bro. Probably on the phone with me doing business. So this draft rip. Look at this, y'all. My guy Quinion Mitchell. So funny story, right? So when we lost versus Green Bay, we lost versus the Green Bay Packers. I said, you know what, Cowboys Nation? Y'all said, I'm going to give y'all a quick prospect to watch to cheer y'all up. And it was Quinn Yaw Mitchell out Toledo, right? Quinn Yaw Mitchell at the time was maybe like a late second round pick, possibly fringe first round guy. Bro, he shot up this board so damn quick. I think he's going to be even higher. You know what I'm saying? My guy Quinn Yaw Mitchell has smoked this entire process so graham barton's off the board we lost graham one of our 30 visits troy fatano pittsburgh that makes sense mims is gone okay boom 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 so here we are we're sitting here at the back of the draft back of the draft y'all we have brian thomas jr wild receiver i know a lot of cowboys fans are wanting a wild receiver that's something to make us feel good that's something to make us feel good right getting a wild receiver not getting jj mccarthy don't even ask about it um, Adani Mitchell, another wide receiver, speedster. You guys like speed. Um, TJ Tampa, cornerback, Braden Fist, Troy Franklin, another wide receiver. If you're looking at the offensive line position, which I feel like is a need, you're getting great value right here for Jordan Morgan sitting right there staring you in the face. There's also Kingsley, who they're a fan of. So getting Kingsley right here, I'm not upset. I'm not upset right here if we got Kingsley, but I prefer Jordan Morgan over it. So if we're doing this the Dallas Cowboys way, I think that Kingsley would probably be the pick they would go for over Jordan Morgan. But if it's me, Trill McClay making the pick, I'm going with Jordan Morgan, right? So my guy Devon says that taking Jordan Morgan, hey, we're not doing things the Cowboys way, man. This is, we do things our way, man, around here, man. I think Jordan Morgan is the pick. You go get your left tackle. I feel like he's going to be perfectly fine to left tackle position. You have Jordan Morgan at left tackle. You have Tyler Smith at left guard. Now you're rocking and rolling. I'm going with Jordan Morgan out of Arizona at pick 32. Can't be mad at that. Mm. Mm. All right. Cool. So now we're sitting here at 56. Now we're sitting here at 56. We have Jonah Ellis, good edge rusher. Marshawn Neely, also good edge rusher. You have two. Two. I'm going I'm to give you all a film session on Jalen Polk because I feel like some Cowboys fans just don't understand how good this kid is, right? We have Jalen Polk sitting right there. You also have Keon Coleman, who is my guy out of the University of Florida State, right? You have two premier wide receivers staring in the face, but you also have Edron Cooper, linebacker, High motor guy right there. You also have Xavier Leggett right there. Christian Haynes, if you wanted to. But the chat saying Keon Coleman. I y'all y'all know y'all know I ain't gonna fight with y'all. Y'all know I ain't gonna fight with y'all if it's Keon Coleman sitting right there. 
You pair up Keon Coleman with his cousin, CeeDee Lamb. Good X, Y receiver that can play on the boundary, can go up and get it. Dak Prescott can throw that back shoulder fade and do all those Michael gallup s things. Going with Keon Coleman, man. Because you have to understand, right? Because I see that you're asking um, Poke is slept on. Yeah, Poke is hugely slept on. Like, I don't know. I mean, he's all Lufkin, Texas, Des Bryant territory. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, like, I'm... I love Jalen Polk, man. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm going to have to drop it. I think, like, what happens is people aren't exposed to certain prospects during draft time, so they don't know besides the diehard people. You know what I'm saying? Diehard people. Running backs. Look at running backs. Jalen Wright's available. Blake Corum, Bucky Irving, Trey Benson, Marshawn Lloyd. They're all there. But also remember, y'all, we got an extra pick inside the top 100. We got two. You know what I'm saying? So, so we're good there. We're good there. We're good there. I feel like Keon Coleman sitting there at 56, y'all, is too much to pass on. It's too good. To, it's too good to be true. I would take the pick, man. I would go with Keon Coleman. I see everyone in the chat saying Keon Coleman. Though I would like Edrin Cooper if you want to go defense. The only thing I would say about Edrin Cooper, and me personally, I said this on last Thursday's show, right? I know we have Overshone. He's very Overshone-ish, but we don't know if Overshone's going to be Overshone, so I would definitely take Edrin Cooper, but... Keon Coleman, I feel like he fills that that void, adds to our offense. Go Keon Coleman. All right, let's see what's sitting here. All right, so now we're sitting here at 87. And you got Bucky Irving, who we spoke about. If you want a linebacker, Jeremiah Trotter's sitting there. So if you want to go linebacker, you still can do it. Running backs, you have Bucky Irving, Ray Davis, Marshawn Lloyd. Marshawn Lloyd is my favorite that's available. You also have Braylon Allen still sitting there available. Um, you have Isaac, who I know you guys mentioned in the chat. Um, Dylan out of New Hampshire, but I wouldn't reach that early. So I would hold off on running backs if we can get one at 95. And I would strongly look at linebacker. Look at linebacker, because I still feel like there's a void. So you have Jeremiah Trotter. Who I feel like it's going to be a decent middle linebacker in the future. It's going to take him a minute. He doesn't jump. Isn't real sexy. Um, Junior Colson is gone. You have Maris LaFowl, Cedric Gray, and then it kind of falls off a little bit for you. Um, so you could you went left tackle. Could get nah. That's too much offensive line. Dominic Puny, Jerrion Jones. I think Jerrion Jones out of Florida State. Is a good prospect. Had a good um, Shrine Bowl. I know Al Harris really liked him, but I doubt we would take him this early. No safeties. So for me, so for me, I would go with linebacker and I would go with Jeremiah Trotter because if you don't get Jeremiah Trotter here, you have the possibility, y'all, of really getting wiped out because you could get this swiped and Maris swipe, and then you're pretty much just getting like special team kind of guys, right? So. I would go with Jeremiah Trotter just to get a guy that I know has upside potential at the linebacker position because I think if we wait, it's going to get wiped out. It's going to get wiped out. So my pick would be Jeremiah Trotter right here, to be honest with you. So you say running back? I feel like we can wait for running back because we remember we got pick 95. So I feel like we can go get running back after that. Running back is a lot deeper Running back is a lot deeper. So you get, like, say we get wiped out of running back, you can still go get Braylon Allen at 95, right? But if you lose at linebacker, y'all, we get wiped out of linebacker, it's a risk. If these two get wiped out, you're just SOL. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're SOL because these get snatched up quick. So I would go with linebacker, Jeremiah Trotter, because running back is still deeper at this position and we have the extra pick. We can get him. So Jeremiah Trotter would be the pick here, linebacker. All right, so now we'll pivot. Well, Maris was still there, but still. Uh, running back. So now, we're sitting there. All the running backs are still available. You have Ray Davis. I know a lot of people mention Ray Davis. Ray Davis is a good running back. Ray Davis is 25 years old, y'all, and he has a lot of carries on his body. You know what I'm saying? You might get two years. He's an old Ford pickup truck. You know what I'm saying? Like, nothing too crazy, but... He's definitely a good running back, but he's up there in age. So you could go get Ray Davis. Me personally, if I had to list my prospects that I like the best that's available, 
out of Ray Davis, uh, Marshawn Lloyd, Tyrone Tracy, Audric, Braylon Allen, Will Shipley, I would lean towards Marshawn Lloyd. I feel like Marshawn Lloyd is the better running back that's available that has the better upside. Ray Davis is like he's good, but he's just too old. Braylon Allen's young. It's going to take him some time to grow, but I would not be mad if you took him. Me, I would take Marshawn Lloyd at this pick, to be honest with you. Uh, defensive tackle. Defensive tackle. Let's look at DT. Um, so you have Michael Hall. You have Dwayne Carter, who we did Dwayne Carter's film a few weeks ago. What's up, my guy? JC Cowboys Network in the building, man. Definitely give my bro a uh, follow, man. He's the young gunner when it comes to this, this Cowboys draft stuff, man. So pretty soon when I walk away and ride off in the sunset, man, my guy JC is going to have it covered for y'all, man. So um, Michael Hall, we have Dwayne Carter. Love Dwayne Carter. More of a three-tech. You have Big Leonard Davis. McKinley Jackson, who I think the Cowboys are high on. I think he was a 30 visit as well. Uh, Mikai Wingo out of LSU. Um, there's some names, Juwan Briggs. Um, so it depends on once again, right? If you're looking for three techs or one text, right? If you're looking for threes, Dwayne Carter might be the best value. So if you guys want to have some fun, you know what I'm saying, and roll the dice a little bit, we can go get Dwayne Carter, and I feel like we'll be able to spin the block and possibly get Braylon Allen later. At that 131 pick. So I would not be opposed to go get Dwayne Carter. I see Dwayne Carter, Dwayne Carter, Dwayne Carter. Let's go get Dwayne Carter. Let's see. Let's roll the dice at running back. Boom. Braylon Allen's right there. Um, so Braylon Allen's still available. You guys mentioned Braylon Allen. So now we get our running back in Braylon Allen. I would go take Braylon Allen and get the hell up out of here because if you wait, you're going to get wiped out. So let's go get Braylon Allen because I know you guys were mentioning him earlier. Bang. Right. There's our 30 visit guy. There's our formal guy that we circled. Right. You know what I'm saying? So there we, there we go. So there we go. All right. So now we can have a little bit of fun. Right. So here we are. I hate that. We're in the we are in the fifth round. Right. So we're in the fifth round. Um, We could go possibly back to offensive line if you wanted to. We haven't went edge yet. You have Jalen Harrell out of Michigan. I know you guys are anti-Michigan. If you want to get, just get bigger in the interior and get like another one tech, you can go with big Jordan Jefferson defensive in, or sorry, defensive interior out of LSU. Big body guy. Ryan Watts, if you're looking for corner, just a big athletic size corner guy that you can probably get. I like him. Um, Jalen Green. So Jalen Green, and I'm going to break down the film on him as well. So Jalen Green, y'all, out of James Madison, this kid, bro, y'all know when I dro dropped the film last year on Isaiah Land, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to drop the film on Jalen Green because, man, he had like 18 sacks. Oh, crap. I bet. All right. Um, one second here. See, I got, I got me cooking, man. I forgot about I was supposed to be at the bar right now, man. People was like, where you at, man? I was like, oh, I'm saying my bad. Um, you can probably, uh, Jalen Green. So, Jalen Green, he had like 18, yeah, nine games, y'all. 18 sacks. This is not a, this is not a typo. Nine games, 18 sacks. And he got an injury. So, he had a leg injury um, at, at James Madison. So, he would be a guy that you can possibly get in the later rounds. That can give you huge upside potential, uh, depending on his injury. Uh, let's see here. It said Justin Rogers Auburn. Where are you seeing the listed? Okay, this is Justin Rogers. So 346. There's your one tech right there. Big inside guy. Oh, no. Oh, crap. Right. Series recorded my whole conversation. So you could go get a big physical guy. If I'm going interior, I would go with Jordan Jefferson. I feel like Jordan Jefferson's the better player right now um, over Justin Rogers. Even though I like Rogers' size, I would go with Justin Jefferson because he gives you some opportunity to get in the backfield as well. So my pick would be Jordan Jefferson out of LSU. So let's go with Jordan Jefferson. I got to speed this up, y'all, because I am late. My bad. Time is, you know what I'm saying? Time is flew by. Time flies by when you're having fun. All right. Boom. So we did Jordan Jefferson. So the interior is good. We got wide receivers good. 
if you're looking to go offensive line, center Tanner Bonalini. He's played left tackle. He's played left guard. He's played center. He's played right tackle. He's played all over, man. You know what I'm saying? Checking all these different boxes. So left guard, center, right guard, right tackle. He hasn't played left tackle. My bad. So he gives you that versatility, right? He's kind of like an insurance policy of a guy that you don't need to be day one ready, but he has familiarity at different positions. So if something breaks and you might need to play a backup center or a backup left guard, Tanner can give you that position flex. So me personally, it would be Tanner for me. Um, Jordan Whittington, we already went wide receiver, so I wouldn't go for him. I love Isaiah Davis, but we already got running backs here. Um, let's see here. Dominic Hampton. Let me ask y'all this. Do y'all think the Cowboys are going to draft a safety? Because I like I like a lot of these safeties, man. I like a lot of these safeties, man. And it's just like, I don't know. You know it's hard to pass up, man. Um, double dip at running back. I would double dip at running back. No, not if I got Trey. Well, we can get Trey Benson. We got Braylon Allen, right? I wouldn't double dip at running back because I feel like you can get a UDFA at running back. Defensive end. Let's see what's that edge. Good. Yeah, so you got Khalid Duke. You have J.J. Weaver, Cedric Johnson. These are kind of your big physical edge setter guys. Um, let's see here. You also got, yeah, I wouldn't reach that far. So you got Khalid Duke, J.J. Weaver, Cedric Johnson, and Trajan Jeffcoat. Those are kind of your bigger bodies. Um, no Wanye's up next. So yeah, I would, I would, I would probably just think they will stay away from it because you also have Izzy that can convert as well, man. What's up, my guy Chuck? Man, what's going on with you, bro? Um, need to replace Hooker. I think that Wanye could be your free as well. So you have Malik, Wanye, uh, Donovan. You can possibly say Izzy McQuamu. And then also, you know, there's another guy, right? So we took, yeah, Tanner. I think Tanner's the pick, right? Tanner's the pick. Offensive line flexibility. Boom, Tanner's the pick right there. Let's speed that up. Man, bro, there's so many tight ends. I like a lot of tight ends, man, but... I'm going to go with tight end. Um, so with these last few picks, right, if you want to double dip, right, we talked about Rasheen Ali. You could possibly go get him there. Um, but a guy that I can pretty much tell y'all the Cowboys are interested in, and a lot of teams are, right, and he's going to be interested to see where he falls, is Trevin Wallace. And Trevin Wallace is like Micah Parsons from Aldi's. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's, he has a lot of those traits. But the problem with Wallace is, is a lot of cleanup, right? A lot of missed tackles, a lot of missed uh, reads, different things like that. But he is a guy who's just revved up, bro. Like, he's just, he plays on go. And, y'all, and, I'll, and I'll, do, I'll do the film session. He said that um, he said that Mike is his favorite player. I think Nicole, um, who covers the Cowboys, had you to sit down one-on-one with him as well because she covers Kentucky. So I would pretty much say that Trevon Wallace, if he's sitting right here, Trevon Wallace, he would be the pick. Just from special teams, motor, you know, all that is, is sitting right there. Trevin Wallace. So let's go ahead and get Trevin Wallace so I can get up out of here. And then the last pick, man, you have Rasheen Ali. Um, you have, yeah, he's a great value. You know what I'm saying? He's a great value of Michael Parson. You know what I'm saying? But since some people are so relieved that we could get rid of Micah Parsons, maybe you get Trevin Wallace and he would be the guy. Yeah, womp womp. All right, so if you want to double dip at running back, we can. You have Rasheen Ali. You have big Evan Anderson sitting right there, man, from Florida Atlantic. He's not going to do much, but just be a big, big wrecking crew, y'all. That's all he's really going to be. My guy, uh, Anderson, man, that's all he's really going to be is a big old wrecking ball, man. Like, he ain't going to do much out there. He's not going to do much. But he's going to go up there and just clog the middle, man, uh, with my guy, uh, big Evan Anderson. So he's a guy you can definitely take a look at as well. Um and let's see here. Uh, Kenny Logan, man. I love Kenny Logan. Good safety, but we're kind of stacked at safety, but I still would take him. Jordan McGee. Jordan McGee is another name that's buzzing with the Cowboys as well, but we just took Trevin Wallace. So me personally, I would just go get the running back that we talked about to cap this thing off with Rasheen Ali. Double ticket running back, and we done so. So let's see what we did, y'all. Let's see what we did, y'all. Bang. So we trade back with the Chiefs. Jordan Morgan, our left tackle. Keon Coleman, our wide receiver on the boundary. Jeremiah Trotter as our linebacker room. You have Big Dwayne Carter in the interior. Braylon Allen. You also have Jordan Jefferson. 
Our Tanner Border leading gives you that flexibility at center and also left guard. Trevin Wallace, high motor guy. And Rasheen Ali is another dynamic running back that you can toss in the fire. Yo, we smoked it. Yo, 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 we smoked it, y'all. We, we smoked it. This is what I'm saying. Team trade back. We're in the building. So to my guy, Rome, man. So to my guy, Rome. Team trade back. We are in the building, y'all. This is a phenomenal draft. If we walk out with this draft, I am good. I'm relieved. You know what I'm saying? I am relieved. We fixed it. Just like you said, we fixed the team. Damn it. Sometimes we got to do things ourselves. We fixed the team. This is a good quality draft right here. I love these picks, man. Trill McClay, man. Everybody put your wizards in the chat, man. Light the chat up with your wizards, man. That's why I love this community, man. We got a bunch of draft wizards out here. We are smoking the draft. And Will McClay, just take the day off. T take the draft off. We got it, bro. Pass us the keys and let the draft wizards go out there and handle business. And we went out there and really improved this Dallas Cowboys roster. We filled some holes. We got some instant impact guys with Jordan Morgan, Keon Coleman, Dwayne Carter, and Jeremiah Trotter. We traded back, so there was value there. We got some death pieces. We did our job. We did our job, man. Salute to all my wizards out there, man. I appreciate y'all, man, for all the support. Like I said, thank y'all for rocking with me. Um, like I said, man, I, I appreciate each and every one of y'all, man. I do this for y'all. I, I, I enjoy this. I have fun. It's what I love to do. I don't do it for any other reason besides I love to do it, man. And you guys are the reason why I do it. You are my engine, man. And I just have fun doing it. So I appreciate each and every one of you guys, man. So the Cowboys can fan the building. You know what I'm saying? They, 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 for, for those who might have chimed in late for Cowboys can fan, we just, we, we just told how we just smoke a draft. You know what I'm saying? We, we just smoke. We just told we smoke the draft. You know what I'm saying? Nothing new. It's just what we do, man. But overall, great draft, man. Keep up the great work. Um, I'm going to post something in our community tab. Um, so if you guys have prospects that you want me to break down film on, just let me know. I'll upload the film. And then, you know, so that we can kind of watch it. Because, like, we got to rev things up a little bit. And there's a lot of, like, day three guys that aren't being mentioned. And I definitely want to get you guys, you know, um, uh, you know, exposure to that. So if there's a guy like, man, I want, I've been hearing about this guy, Tuck, but I haven't really seen him. Let me know. And I'll definitely, you know, get that uploaded for you guys. But, y'all, I appreciate you guys once again. Thank you all for rocking with me. At the end of the day, like I said earlier, all that hate that they're doing stops absolutely nothing. We are going nowhere. We're only getting stronger. We, more people are being, you know what I'm saying, updated what we do here in our community because it's not about them. It's about us as a whole. And we're all here just trying to win our fifth championship for the Dallas Cowboys, man. So I'm about to head to the bar, man. Good luck with y'all final four picks. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God, DMV. Yeah, man, you just missed it, bro. It, it was kind of a whim. I just went live for the hell of it, man. I got to meet my friends at the bar real quick and go have some Saturday fun. But um, appreciate y'all, man. I want everyone to stay safe, stay blessed, stay encouraged. Download the Picket app, man, for all my sports bettors. Even if you're not a sports better, you can connect anything to it. And you get the opportunity to do something for free and win free money. You might just you might just be the lucky person that gets the extra $200 because you signed up and used the code CFO and you got $200 and DMV only get the $3. You know what I'm saying? But sign up, you might get the free money if you don't sports bet. But I appreciate you guys for all your support. We're going to rock all week. We got, a, we got a monstrous week lined up, y'all. And I didn't got Vodge lined up. I mean, I got so many shows lined up this week. I actually forgot I got to check my schedule, man. So turn on that notification bell so you do not miss out, man. I appreciate all support. Stay safe. Stay blessed. Stay encouraged. You go Cowboys. Peace. <laughs>